The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the February 29th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you. 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, we've got you covered. You can always send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFN.com. And inside the subject heading, subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any in every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Well, we've got a little bit of a sea of green right now. The Dow just turning positive. It's up five points. Joining the other U.S. indices that are trading to the upside. Uh, S&P's up 14 points. NASDAQ 188. Russell's up 18. Semi's up 73. Gold's up 12 bucks. Silver's up 16 cents. Lights we could up six penny. Natural gas is flat. The 30-year Treasury printed out 119.12. The leader in the clubhouse to the upside is Super Microcomputer up 56 bucks. We're going to take a look at that during the show with Steve Wo or for Steve Woods. We'll take a look at float indicator there. Duolingo up 43 bucks, 22%. Now, I've never used the app, but I do have a granddaughter, youngest granddaughter, has been teaching herself Japan, Japanese on that. It's really pretty cool. Very eight years old, just decided to pick this up uh, last year. Uh, MicroStrategy up 36 bucks or 4%. Oaked up 17 bucks, 20%. And Vidya is up uh, 15 bucks, about 2%. To the downside, it's Snowflake. CEO is leaving down 43 uh, bucks. That's a 20% move. Our Genix SE down 24 bucks or 6%. Regenerin down 15 bucks. Viking Therapeutics off 15. Bank of Montreal down 13 bucks. That's a 4% move there. So let's go take a look at what you want to look at. What do you want to look at? Let's go take a look at, um, let's go see what we've got going on here in the daily equity future contract. So we know that as of our last set of swing points, let's go take a look at this daily time frame. Let us set of swing points out here, major swing points on a daily time frame would be the July 27th high, and then the low would be the uh, October 27th low. If we take a look at that and apply our Fibonacci expansion, you can see we're just sitting right at the 1.618 expansion level of that set of swing points. 5091 is the number. We're at 5091 right now. Price is above the top of its bearish structure daily profile. That's a positive. If there's any negative that I would see out here, I see one, two, three, four bars with lower lows. But today we have spiked a bit higher out there. So, hmm, what does that mean? Well, right now, what price is doing, it's testing at 5105. You can write that down in your pad of paper. 5105 is that green oscillator and change line. If price were to close above that today, not that the ES Mini is not bullish, but it would get to all-out bullish mode out there. There'd be no traffic. Uh, there'd be no resistance point is really what I should say. So that's the ES Mini out there. What's this next price projection level? 5309. If we take a look at the NQ, I don't have the... Uh, Expansion levels on here right now, and the reason is because we've got a Rhodes Mintum indicator top, and that's at the 18040 level. There was a bear sash candle that formed a couple of days ago. My, by the way, my apology for being unable to host a show yesterday. Internet issues was down until about uh, four four thirty, something like that. Uh, I'm still actually having some issues in the in the house now, so we got real wireless issues. But luckily, I'm wired hard in, so. Uh, uh, now, a programming note, I will be unable to host a show tomorrow, so I'll be back with you live on uh, Monday. <laughs> Nothing internet-related. I'm going to go play with my one of my youngest 
out there and roll around on the uh, floor and just have a blast with him for the weekend. So uh, with regard to the NQ, watch 1804025. Our price closes above that. Uh, we're headed higher. Otherwise, it still has its roads meant to indicator top. Now, the interesting thing about yesterday's activity and today's activity, price had closed above the top of this bear structure daily profile for more than two sessions. It began that close above it on February 22nd. It remained above it for, for four sessions. Then we get that bear sash candle. That bear sash candle yesterday uh, negates, uh, 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 creates the Roseman indicator top and closes just below the top of that profile. Old resistance typically becomes new support. But in this case here, we know that counter trend moves. And I can't, I can only tell you that right now, as of 11.11, the activity we've seen inside of the NQ over the last four days has been nothing more than just a counter trend move. And the reason that we conclude that is because all counter trend rallies will typically end at the center of that bullish structure, bearish structured daily profile once you close above it. I hope that makes sense to you. I can just give you this, the, 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 the lowdown here. 17,793. If you see a close below the NQ, I'd say tomorrow, today, not likely. But if you do see a close below that, then this is telling us something else. Now, that something else might just take price back to 17,531. So the two numbers to watch on the NQ, just cut to the chase, Debo. 180425 and 17,793. Those are the numbers that you need to know for the NQ, and that will assist you in which direction it decides that it really wants to move. Now, we take a look at the Dow Equity Future contract. We do have, it does not have a top in place, no topping pattern. I can't say, you know, it doesn't have a topping pattern. Has it topped? I don't know. I don't have a topping pattern out here. What we do have is price trade above the top of its daily profile. Old resistance yesterday, today has shown that it is new support. It's beyond the 1.618 expansion of its last set of swing points. So the Dow Equity Future contract says it wants to get up to that 40,116 level. Now let's take a look at that uh, Russell 2000 equity future contract. One heck of a nice rally, but how strong is that trend line out there? Price right back below it right now. Uh, look, it's got a, a the key number here for the Russell to the upside is going to be 2097. The price were to close above that, geez, that could actually set up a gigantic A to B equals C to the upside. That is not the pattern that we have right now. That's your top, 2097. A secondary top is that trend line. And that has, uh, that has uh, so what I watch for is if the Russell were to close a day above 2065, that's my best guesstimate right now because I don't, I can't really put a, an exact number, but it looks like about 2065. If price closed above, you know what I can tell you? Because yeah, this looks like a dark cloud cover candle to me. Uh, nah, it didn't close all the way in there. I, I, I'll just leave it like that. 2065. You get a close about 2065. Odds favor the move to 2097 out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at the daily equity future contract. Just curious how we trade in the other currencies out there. Any new all-time highs? Um, 4033. We're at 4032. No. Uh, no. No new all-time highs in the other currencies as I see them just yet. Uh, so now what do we want to do out here? What do we want to do? I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's go take a look at some of the intraday charts. So let's switch panels here. And we're also going to have to get over to that chart and, and uh, fire it up. If you give me a moment, we'll go to the white back. Well, you know what? We're coming to a break. Let's do this. We come back from this break. We've got, uh, I, I believe, a couple requests in from, uh, that was posted yesterday morning for Jay and Boca, Firm, POWW. Then we're going to take a look at AI, Mara, SMCI, AMD, Lightsweet Crude, and uh, we'll keep those rolling too. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Well, back up, folks. We got the stock charts up for the firm AFF. AFRM, by the way, is the uh, ticker symbol out there. We've got the uh, daily, the weekly, and the monthly. This is for Jay in uh, Boca Raton out here. So, Jay, thanks for waiting an extra day on this. I believe we didn't get to it on uh, on uh, on Tuesday out there. So we take a look at a firm right now. What do we have out here? Right now, I just have a consolidation with inside its daily profile. So the level of support would be at 3706. The level of resistance would be between 4052 and 4283, with there being also resistance up at the 4220. Let me make sure I get that right. 42, 4220 level. So um, do I have any kind of a bottom signal out here on a firm? So the bottom signal would have to be this, Jay, and that is that price got back to the breakout level at 37.25. And getting back to a breakout level, you do see a TD9 count out here, but it was bar number six that made that low. To me, that doesn't qualify as a, a bottoming uh, pattern out here. But you do have that breakout level. It's been tested, and it's uh, you know it's pretty much held for the most part. So what price would have to do is price would Jay would have price would have to on a daily basis have to close above 3901 to suggest it wants to go take on where those sellers are at at the 4052 and 4283. There's sellers by the way right here at 3901. Weekly chart, TD9 count with a consolidation with inside its profile levels out here. So. Um, 3412 at support, 4942 at resistance. Uh, monthly chart looks pretty good, although on a monthly basis, we close out the month today. We are closing below last month's low. So that's not a great sign out there. So I would suggest here, if you look at it, I didn't write down anything else, any other details. I don't recall if you gave me any other details. Uh, but if you're looking to enter this, I'd be watching the 3412 area probably more than anything else. So that's what we see when we take a look at a firm. You also want to take a look at POWW. So let's pull that set of charts up on the screen. On POWW right now, trading at about 236. You'd love to see this close the day above 237. If it did that, that would be telling you its intent to go target its most recent swing point. Now, that recent swing point, pretty wide ranging, runs from 245. So you'd love to see it close above 245 all the way up to 273. Now, volume there was 1.6 million shares. Today, you're put, trying to push into it with uh, 167,000 shares. So way light on the uh, volume standpoint. Nonetheless, POWW, 
trade above the top of its daily profile. Uh, if it can close above 237, that's its green asset and change line, it should go retarget those recent highs. The weekly chart looks bullish as well with price above resistance levels, those being basically at 218. And in the case of the monthly time frame chart, nothing bearish here that I see. Price just trading with inside its profile as well. So, Jay, thank you for waiting an extra day for your review of POWW and uh, Affirm. Uh, Jim writes in, and he wants to take a look at AI. So let's pull those uh, stock charts up here. And Jim was looking for resistance levels, Jim C. Well, first what pops up on my screens out here is your next resistance level is uh, 44.90. Now, let me, that's on the weekly chart, by the way. That's a TD9 count breakdown level. Why does Stevie come up with that as a conclusion? Well, first of all, we're trading above all of the most recent swing points. So that would be number one. Wide ranging bar. We're trading above green asset and change on the weekly basis. A close above 30.81 tomorrow. It's going to be all out bullish conditions. So 44.90 is the weekly next level of resistance out here. On a daily time frame, it's at 40.68. That's its TD9 count breakdown resistance level out there. Now, what do we see? I see pretty much a consolidation breakout that's going on here. When we take a look at the daily time frame, if we draw in the approximate consolidation pattern, I'm not going to worry about being, you know, right, right. So the bottom pretty easy to line up here. That's easy. And I'd say the top pretty much right there, yeah, right about here. So now what we've got is a consolidation measured move for AI. That's the breakout today. And so if we take a look at this, we're just simply going to add this to about right here. And that's going to give, so it tells us that where this wants to go target. So usually when you break a consolidation, Jim, uh, what an instrument will do is make a measured move equal to or greater than. Uh, the actual measured move. So we know we got resistance on the daily and the weekly in that 40-ish dollar area. This has us getting up towards the 43 level, uh, which really gets us back into the swing point on a daily basis from back in August of 2023 out there. So you were looking for uh, resistance levels. I think that's what I provided to you. 4503 on the monthly base would be the AI resistance level as well. You also wanted to take a look at MARA. M-A-R-A is the ticker symbol. So let's pull that up and see what we have going on here. Now this has a, a new profile that is forming today and price is trading inside it right now that new profile has support at 2381 now as far as tops are concerned it had a rosemont indicator signal that's been triggered believe it or not we still don't have the bearish reversal candle but we are trading now back below that green asset and change on inside the profile so the first level to watch today mara is going to be mara <laughs> jim is going to be 2610 that's assuming that price closes below that. If price closes below that, that becomes your first resistance level. You were looking for resistance. If price closes above that, resistance is maybe around 2731. It's green asset and change on above that 2918 out there. When I look at the weekly time frame chart, the weekly time frame chart at the moment, that, that we don't even need it at the moment. The weekly time frame chart has a TD9 count top, a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. But price has not been, it's had those for a while. And price has not been able to bust through any real key levels of support. So the next area of support on a weekly time frame for Mara on a move lower is going to be 2273. Resistance on a move higher is going to be at the 3130 level. The monthly time frame chart. So this is going to be important for you to watch, Jim. We just talked about, I don't recall the instrument. Might have. I don't recall the instrument off the top of my head. That's how good my mind is, isn't it? But we talked about the bearish structured profile. This is the opposite. Time frame doesn't matter. Bullish structured profile. Price closed below it for many, many months. If the move is only a counter trend move inside of Mara, where would it find resistance? At the center. Where is the center? 3135. It's tested that this month. It tested it two months ago. That's your strong resistance level. So if you want to really know where Mara is going to go ahead and have a big old party and invite everybody, it would be a monthly close above 3135 out there. So right now, I'd have to say it looks like to me this wants to pull back 2381, 2273. That would be the range that I would be looking at. So I hope that helped you out, Jim. Thanks so much for the request. Stevie Woods of the Woods Float Indicator out there uh, wants to take a look at SMCI. That's our leader in the clubhouse, by the way, dollar-wise, the upside, a $49 move up nearly about 6%. But when we take a look at it, what is it actually doing out here? Great question. Well, 
It's trading above the top of its profile. So, Steve-O, 785.36 is going to be a level of support on any move lower. Your first resistance level on the daily time frame is at 900.71. That is the green oscillator and change line. That is a level, even though it's up 48 bucks, and even though it's a 6% move, that's off of yesterday. 900 and change, let's call it 902. A close above 902 would get this thing really bullish because it'd be above all profile resistance. It would be above its oscillator and change line resistance. Then the next upside target would be this bearish engulfing candle out here uh, from the trading session of February 16th. And that resistance level is the high, which is at 1,077.87. Let me open this up just a tad, pull this back. See if there's anything else out here worth noting on the daily time frame. The answer is no. On a weekly time frame, we've got a Rogeman indicator top, a price above, pro it's neutral. Price above profile resistance, it's oscillator and change on. It's all out bullish on the monthly time frame. If we come back to this break, I'm gonna go ahead and put the float indicator chart up so that Steve can take a look at it. He's trying to get the folks the signal to correct it. Zero for TFN. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back 
back, uh, folks. So uh, the chart that I'm showing here is the daily chart for SMCI, the indicator that's out here. Pretty cool. Uh, 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 some of you may know Steve Woods. He's uh, the one that's developed this uh, float uh, turnover channel indicator. Uh, that's what that uh, purple area here. So it's it's a tool that's on the e-signal system, but it wasn't working properly. So uh, Steve asked me if I could post this chart so he could see what's going on. So there you go, Steve-o. And uh, hopefully they've uh, corrected what it was you were looking for. Uh, the next request that came in is AMD. That is is for G-Man inside the Tiger's Den. For those charts, we're going to go back to our white background charts, take a look at those uh, daily, weekly, and monthly time frames, get a feel for what is going on here. So we take a look at AMD. The question is, will this continue to move northward? And the answer to that is blowing in the wind. Looks like the answer to as we speak right now at 1131, the answer is yes. Why do we say the answer is yes? Well, first, we're trading above the top of its daily profile. The top of that profile is 181.63. Second, we're trading above the top of its Rhodesman Dominicator top. That was from February 23rd. That high is 183.80. That's the most important level right now for you to watch, G-Man, 183.80. If price closes above that, then this is a move to the upside. Now, there is a swing point that it's also dealing with here. Let me just open this up. I don't know if that was a sell the D point. Yeah, that was also a – but it wasn't a bearish reversal candle. So it's just a swing that has volume right now. It has a volume right now. It's not going to change, Stevie. That was back on January 20th. Don't you just love the intelligence that sometimes I display? I know it just cracks the – you know what I mean. But that event out here, if we take a look at that high, is at 184.92. And it's important, but the more important high for, for us right now is really going to be that high from that dark cloud cover at that 183.80. But to answer your question, you close above those things out there, and it would suggest that it wants to move higher. If we take a look at the weekly time frame, the weekly time frame does not have a top and price trade above its weekly profile. So tomorrow, and I won't be able to be with you tomorrow to take a look at this, we can on Monday, but a close tomorrow above 179.80 is another bullish outcome. Of course, closing above its swing high, and that's the swing from January 26th, and that high out there was at 184.92. That would be a beautiful thing. And the monthly basis, everything, you know, you're going to close the month, it appears, with a close above last month's high. It's just simply bullish, daily, weekly, monthly time frame. So the only thing I could get in the way is some kind of intraday chart that shows some kind of topping pattern. Again, this is getting ready for a retracement or pullback. Well, the 30-minute time frame chart doesn't have that pattern. Yep, so we don't have anything there to be worried about at this stage. How about the 65-minute time frame chart? We don't see anything there. We'll just try one more, which would be that 130. Again, we use these time frames. may seem odd to you, but if you think about it in reality, it's a 390-minute session. If you want to do True technical analysis, each bar should basically be the same time frame. And that's why at 130, there's 330 minute bars in a day uh, inside the uh, uh, indices and inside the uh, stocks out there that we trade. So uh, let's just get this back to a 30 minute chart and let's move on. So, G Man, hope that helped answer your question with regard to is there an upward movement continuation? It will be revealed to you at day's end. But right now, the answer is absolutely. John C. inside the Tigers and wants to take a look at Light Sweet Crude. So let's uh, pull up uh, the, the, the multi time frame charts for light sweet crude give me a moment we'll get there and here we're going to have daily weekly monthly and the shortest intraday time period that i have here is the heck what the heck's going oh i see I'm, I'm like what the heck's going on in my 30 minute chart that's because it wasn't updated there we go okay so on a monthly basis right now john on a monthly basis light sweet crude is dealing with a potential resistance level that if you can close above we're talking today and that level is at uh, 79.31. If price blows above 79.31, that's going to suggest that we should rally further, with 80.13 being a bit of a battleground and 86.17 being another battleground. That's the monthly. The weekly time frame chart uh, looks uh, bullish because we're trading above a green oscillator and change line and its profiles. That says it wants to head higher. So what's the holdup here? The holdup is really the daily time frame chart. And on the daily time frame chart, right now, price is trading above the top of that daily profile, 78.43. But there's a trend line that it's dealing with as well. We looked at that during that uh, um, update. So you've seen that. So we don't have to review that. So it's just really running into some trend line resistance that if you can clear and uh, it, it really you, you could draw that trend line just it's it's a simple one here just draw it from this high this high being november 30th then to that next high out there 
uh, which is on the trading session of uh, January 29th. That's your little trend line. If you get price to clear that out there, then uh, the, it'll it'll just simply confirm what the weekly and the daily time frame charts are telling us. Intraday wise, on that uh, 30 minute time frame chart, what do we have here? Price is trading about profile, it's green oscillator and change line, says it wants to head higher out there. So everything that we look at is saying that it would like to head higher. It's just that trend line, and I have no idea whether it's going to fail or not, but that's really what Lightspeed Crude is dealing with as far as uh, my eyes can see. So I hope that helps you out, John. And as always, thank you for taking the time to put in a request. Duncan Steve as well would like to take a look at an instrument. Fortinet, FTNT, is the instrument we're going to take a look at momentarily. Let's get those charts up on the screen. And we take a look at it um it is uh consolidating with inside its daily profile it traded into the sell zone steve oh the sell zone is between 69.39 and 71.49 that oscillator and change line you can see boy that has acted as a real key resistance level so you know you need to see it close above that it being 70.09 of course, if you're going to get a rally, it'd be a little bit above that level. And then if it could close above that, you'd be looking at 71.49. Now, if we close below 69.39 today and we close below 69.39 tomorrow, Steve, oh, I would say prepare for a move back to 65.20. And 65.20 is the bottom of its daily profile. That's what the message of the daily time frame chart is as we speak right now. The weekly time frame chart is simply bullish with price consolidating with inside its new profile. Its new profile has resistance at 70.52. It centers at 67. A 12 and the bottom is down at 5864 out there so you got a bear structured profile resistance again 7052 so you got resistance on the daily at 7008 or thereabouts 7052 on the weekly out here and uh support at 6520 67 12 64 07 and 58 64 that's what i see when i take a look at fortnite or fortnite um however you properly pronounce it and the monthly chart just has a consolidation with inside its bullish structured profile. Oh, I take that back. The monthly chart for Fortinet is just simply all out bullish. Price is trading above, closed above last month, the top of its profile. Looks like it's going to close above on a monthly basis. It's green oscillator and change line at 67.28. So it's just waiting for the daily chart to get its mojo. And can't tell you when that's going to happen, but it does look like it wants to get back to that 6520 level out there. So I hope that helps answer your question. Uh, let's go out to Robert in Kansas. Robert, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? I'm great, Steve. You? Doing very well. Thanks so much for asking. And the Russell 2000, I believe, is the area that you want to take a look at. Uh, tell the folks what you're doing and how I could best help. Now, we're going to go to a break here, Robert, in about uh, 20 seconds or so. So tell me what I can do to help you out. And then when we come back from the break, we'll see if we can see if I can fulfill that request. You bet. So I just wanted to kind of like back up and look at the bigger picture. Last week, you were thinking that like the major indexes were at like a, you know, long term, they were going to be bullish, but you were expecting some type of pullback. Correct. And I, I, and I wanted to kind of elaborate on that. If you kind of go back to that point, specifically the IWM today and see, are you still thinking that or have you changed based on new information and what the market's doing this week? Perfect. Have you changed your, you know, uh, Excellent. Position? Excellent question. Excellent question. Thanks for teeing that up for me. We come back from this break. That's what we'll spend our time taking a look at. Steve Rhodes with Robert in Kansas City. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back. The folks are on the line with Robert in Kansas City. We're going to go take a look at the indices out there. The question is, does uh, Stevie still believe that uh, we are in for a short-term pullback? Short-term pullback, uh, in my uh, eyes, would be one that lasts about four weeks long. So let's take a look. Let's rip apart the. Uh, let's rip apart uh, Robert first. The IW and the Russell 2000. We take a look at the Russell 2000. Today it's testing its uh, swing point from the uh, all-time swing point high from December the 27th out there. That uh, swing point did volume of 35 million shares. We got over it today. We're trading under it right now. The volume so far has been 18 million shares. Now we're about two hours into trading, so that's roughly about uh, 54, 55 million uh, share a day if this volume level. The first two hours matches the last uh, four hours out here or so, four and a half hours. So if we take a look at that, again, with 35 million versus we're at 18. So we're moving into this swing point with volume. What that tells me first, Robert, is even if we close below the bottom of that swing point, the bottom of that swing point from the trading day was December 27th. That low was uh, 203.40. If we close below 203.40, odds favor that we're going to get back up and at least test that level, 203.40. Whether we get, you know, if we um, close inside that swing point, then that would tell us that price is going to go at least test that high. So that's, what, and I see that also if I come off of that uh, December high and I get to the next uh, swing point that formed out here, we can see it forms a little bit of a trend line. And so far, price has rejected that. So what I'm not seeing here is, uh, is a breakout inside the IWM. Before I move on to anything else, any questions about that, Robert? No, you're, what I heard you say, you're not seeing a breakout. Potentially, I, it may test that a few times, and that'll tell us if it's a short-term um, top. Yeah, I, you know, yeah, that, that's that's a that's a that's a way to certainly frame it for sure. Um, what, since I don't see a breakout here, your question was, do I still still I still see a potential for a, a short-term top? And because we don't have a breakout in the IWM, my answer to that's going to be yes. My take a look at the daily time frame, weekly time frame, we have nothing more than consolidation right now with inside its profile. If price were to close above two hundred five forty nine tomorrow, Robert, we might have a bit of a different take on that, but that would be the number to be taken a look. At. 
at. The monthly chart looks very good. So the monthly chart gets back to the thought process that, you know what, after some type of pullback here, the markets are getting ready to move to the upside. That's the signals. And the reason why I say it on a monthly basis, folks, price trade above its green oscillator and change on at 190.24 and above the top of its profile at 192.90. So that looks bullish to me. It's not that the uh, weekly chart is bearish or anything. It just has a consolidation with inside its profile. But it's not the IWM, Robert. So I, because you called about the IWM and I wanted to go to that directly, I want to be able to answer your questions. It is not the IWM that I derive the conclusions from, okay? So I, where I derive those conclusions from were more like the S&P, the Dow, and the NDX 100. If you don't have any other questions about the IWM, I can throw those charts up and show you what I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. You bet. Absolutely. Okay. And, you, and you're right. You, I think you're referring to like the spy when you're having your discussion. But yeah, delve into that, please. Oh, OK, so uh, where did I put those charts? So the first charts, we're going to take a look at just the Dow and the S&P 500 daily, weekly and uh, monthly. Although, why do I have day weekly up here twice for the Dow? Give me a second here. Obviously, Stevie did something wrong, but we're going to correct that. And then let me just put the proper template up here. So we're all looking at the proper thing, all daily, no tad. Oops, that was the wrong thing. If, Sorry. if you are short on time, you can just look at one of the indexes, the SSPI, if that works better for you. Yeah, well, they're both up on the screen. They're really going to kind of show something similar. First, okay. the question is, do we have a daily top? And the answer with regard to that inside the Dow Jones cash indice is yes. We have a Rhodes Mentum indicator top. There was a bearish engulfing candle that took place about four trading sessions ago. So we've got a daily top in the Dow. We have a TD9 count top that's going to confirm tomorrow as long as price closes above 38,654.42. So the daily and weekly are saying we're preparing for some type of pullback. As you know, we have pullbacks, they typically last two to four bars. That's where my four week comes into. Now, four weeks is not going to come into play. In order for that to happen, the Dow must close below that green oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 38,485. Getting back and testing and rejecting that keeps this thing still bullish. You can see even last week and the week before, price got down, tested that level and rejected it. So the weekly still has a top, but we need to see a close below that level. That level, again, right now today, 38.485, that number is going to change. If we do get to see that, Robert, then that tells me the two, three, four week uh, retracement is likely. The monthly chart is just simply all out bullish. And that's why it suggests that we should continue to move higher out there. I, I got you, uh, Al. Thanks. Uh, so that's on the Dow. If we take a look at the S&P 500, the S&P 500 has a wave number seven top. The only thing that negates that is a close above, or is a tick above the all-time high, and that'd be at 51. 1106. If we look at the weekly chart for the SPY, it also is going to form a TD9 count top this week, completes that pattern next week, as long as price on tomorrow closes above 4958.61. And on a monthly basis, it's all out bullish as well. So that's on the S&P and the Dow. If we take a look at the NASDAQ 100, and this is the one we'll finish it off on, the NDX 100, if we take a look at its daily time frame chart, it has a wave number seven pattern. So that's a top. That pattern remains in effect as long as price does not tick above 1809162. We have a TD9 count top that's going to complete tomorrow as long as price closes above 17,642.73, and the monthly chart is all out bullish. That's how I come up with that conclusion out there. I do not see this as a major top, period, period, period. How's that? Yes, it would just be a short-term pullback. At this stage. Uh, you know, I, yeah, I'm here to read. I'm here to read. Opportunity. The yeah, yeah, I'm here to read the message of the markets. Things can change. And so right now, that's what the charts are telling me. We are not at a major all-time high, but we should expect right. to anticipate a pullback. And that pullback, you know, could – look, it could last four – it could last three months too. But I, that's not what I see in the cards. Not today. On David White's birthday, February 29th. So maybe thanks, we'll just end it there. Steve. Much appreciated. You have a great long weekend. You bet. And thanks so much for the call. Ron in Denver has been waiting kindly, so let's go out to Ron. High, but we should expect uh, hey, Ron, turn that pullback. speaker off. That pullback, you know, could, uh -oh. look, it could last four months. Hello? Ron? Do we get Ron? Maybe just turn that uh, that sound up. So I know Ron is calling to talk about GRRR. So as soon as we get him on the line here, do we have him? Al? No, we don't. Okay, so let me, when we do, maybe just notify me that we've got uh, Ron and we'll go take, oh, Ron, are you there? Yes, Steve, thank you very much. My pleasure. Uh, the reason I was calling was 
You got to turn that. Got, turn those, yeah, got to turn the speakers off in the background. You're we're getting reverb, so to speak. Okay, but, I apologize. Uh, yeah, anyway, no problem. Uh, Gorilla G R R R had good yeah. volume yesterday and moved up, and I just wondered. Uh, any thoughts on it as to what the next target would be and what would I be looking for? Volume. So you're trading at about 94 cents right now. The next level of resistance is 98 pennies. If you can get two consecutive closes above 98 cents, it's trading with inside a daily bullish structured profile out there. That would signal to you and I that it wants to make a move up to a buck 30. Um, it hasn't traded enough on the monthly time frame to give me a ton of information, really nor so on the weekly time frame. So it's just the daily. Uh, so it's a beautiful trade. It formed a nice TD9 count, Roachman communicator bottom, TD9 count top. And now, Ron, the level to be watching is 98 cents, and it should get up there. And if you can close above that, a buck 30 is in the cards for you. Uh, thank you very much. And and one one other question, uh, IWM, I want to get you it opened up strong this morning. It's pulled back. And yeah. Would this be a good entry point on IWM? Uh, we'll be right back. Steve Rhodes with TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We're on the line with Ron, who was asking the question, is now the time to uh, take a long position in the Russell 2000? So what's, what's the time frame, Ron, that you're taking a look at? Uh, one week, two weeks. No. Then, then my answer to that would be no, because I'm – I. You might not have heard the conversation when I was on the phone and you were waiting for me to, to come on, but if you go back and you do the replay, I'm expecting and anticipating some type of short to intermediate term top, something that could last about three to four weeks out there. So okay, from that I'm standpoint, sorry. I, yeah, I'm no, sorry. No, that, 
That's you. okay. But That's, yeah, that, okay, I'll, uh, I'll, totally I'll try cool. and do that replay. I appreciate your comments. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. No problem. My pleasure. Uh, thanks so much for calling. That was Ron in Denver. Now, the reason I asked Ron about the uh, time frame, folks, is I do have those Russell 2000 equity future contracts on my screen out here. And if he was a real intraday trader, you know, I'd say, well, the 10-minute chart is giving a nice little buy signal at TD9 count bottom. You should see a little bit of a rally up to 2061. If you get above 2061, 2064 is in the cards, and then 2074.40 is likely the area where the rally would stall. Um, which is the uh, sell zone on that 10-minute time frame chart. So that's the only time frame, by the way, from an intraday standpoint that I've got some type of a uh, signal. So let me get to a couple other requests that did come in. Alton wanted to take a look at Devon Energy. So let me go figure out where we put those charts. That wasn't that. He also wanted Oxy, but let's get Devon first. We take a look at Devon. You're going to complete a TD9 count top today, and that suggests, Alton, that price should pull back to its oscillator and change line. That's at the 43.29 level. The problem with that is if you get to 43.29, You'll be below a bearish structure daily profile, and that ought to take Devon Energy down to 42.70 or 44. I'm sorry, 41.86. So TD9 count top completes on the daily time frame today. You should see a pullback on the other side. What if this pattern fails? To fail, you need to see a close above 44.92, and then the next battle would be up at 45.65. If we take a look at uh, move off of Devon Energy, because we just have a few seconds here, and I go take a look at uh, Oxy for you. That wasn't it. Come on. Where are the Oxy charts? Occidental Petroleum. What do we have here? You've got price running and resist at 61.05. Alton, if you get a close above 61.05, this is likely to rally to 62.61. You get above 62.61, you have a battle at 63.62, and then finally 69.24. Folks, thanks so much for joining me today. Again, I won't be able to host the show tomorrow, but I'll be back with you all refreshed on marvelous, magnificent Monday. Have a terrific Thursday, and happy birthday, Polar. We're thinking of you.